Hi guys, Howard Crossman back again. Uh, been no videos for the last couple of weeks. Um, obviously the lockdown's been lifted. Um, so as I'm sure you can understand, I'd much rather be stood in the river fishing uh, than I would in the loft talking to you guys. Um, unfortunately today, gale force winds, uh, so I've had to cancel that. I'm gonna do a quick video on a subject I've had a lot of emails and messages about, which is how I rig my landing net, particularly when it comes down to uh, you know a competition scenario. Now, a few of you might have seen, um, I did a, an article a few years ago in Fly Fishing and Fly Tying about how I rig my landing net. Um, I've gone away from that system a little bit now for a few reasons, uh, which I'll touch on a little bit later on. Um, and for those of you guys that actually know me, you will know that I've got like this, uh, this real thing about how people set the landing nets up. I honestly think as, as competition anglers, um, we spend a huge amount of time in you know, improving our techniques, improving our ability, using the best equipment we can find, and all these little tricks and things that we do to, to catch more fish. Uh, but then generally speaking, most comp anglers completely overlook the final piece in the puzzle, which is how well you rig your landing net and how efficiently you can use it, which are both absolutely massive things when it comes down to fishing in a competition session. If you think about it, in a three hour session, if you're catching a lot of fish, you can be down to three or four minutes of fish. Now, if that's the case, if it's taking you 30 seconds to re-rig your landing net every time you use it, you know, it's costing your fish and place points at the end of the competition. So for me, you've got to make it as foolproof and as efficient as you possibly can. Now, there's lots and lots of different ways to rig your landing net. And I'm not saying that you have to do it exactly like I do it. I've tried most of the ways of doing it. And the system I'm using currently is the one which at the moment, I think, gives me the best combination of usability and simplicity. Now, I've watched a lot of guys, even very, very high level competition anglers, who like to have the landing net hanging straight off the back of the vest or the back of the pack, um, just on a bungee cord or on a retractor. Now that's fine if it works for you. For me, it doesn't work at all very well. The main reason being, if I wade in deep and I've got that landing net hanging off the back, if I'm right-handed and I'm fishing, I get in nice and deep and the river actually catches that landing net that's hanging on my back and it starts to push it downstream of me. Now quite often what that'll do is take the landing net away from my netting hand. And I've seen a lot of videos of guys, and I've watched them when I've been controlling them on the river, starting to have to do this to try and find the landing net. Quite often, the current will either, if you've got it on a retractor as well, it'll actually pull the landing net to its fullest extent. And I've even seen people in World Championships trying to handline the net back up to get it within range. Just not efficient when you're trying to catch fish, or as many fish as you can in a short spell of time. So I don't like it for that reason. The other reason I don't like it is if you're hang, having it hanging straight down off the back of your vest, when you kneel down in the river, quite often what you do, you end up with that landing net fouling the back of your wading boots. Uh, if you have it on a magnet sometimes as well, with the pan down, you can actually push it off the magnet sometimes if you've not got it set at the right height. So you've really got to take all this into account when you rig your net. No, some of what you will have seen in an early article I did in Fly Fishing and Fly Tying, a system that I used for rigging my landing net with a big retractor. That's a good system. It addresses a lot of the issues. I've recently gone away from that. The reason being that retractor after many years of good service just let go in the middle of the river one day. Um, now it was only pleasure fishing, so it didn't really matter, um, but it caused me a problem. So from a competition perspective, I like to try and get rid of things that cause an issue. So I ditched the retractor and I've now just gone to a heavy bungee cord, single attachment to the landing net. Now, that creates a few issues in itself, but I'll show you how you get around them. So my rigging now for the net is I have it on my back, on a magnet with the handle coming up out over my left shoulder, which means I can just reach straight up, deploy the landing net, if I want to put it back, I go straight back up again and it finds the magnet almost straight away. 
I'll show you how those magnets are set up a little bit later on, but I'm going to show you a couple of quick tricks with it as well, first of all. Now, the downside of this particular system, if you're not careful, is that if you reach up and you deploy your landing net to net a fish, and then that fish gets a second wind and it takes off again, you've then got the net in your hand just attached on a loose bungee cord. And what you often see people do is they just drop the net to then start to wind the fish and play it, get it back under control, and then they're back to the old problem of having to sort of recoup that bungee cord and get hold of the net handle again. There's a really, really easy way to get around that. And all you do is when you reach up for that landing net to go to net your fish, you bring your hand up and just make sure you go around the bungee cord with your hand. Take the net, pull the net off, I'm playing a fish now. That fish runs and I've got to bring that left hand up suddenly to either wind line or, or uh, adjust the drag on the reel. So all I do when I drop it is I make sure that I drop it so the bungee cord is still wrapped around my wrist. Now that allows me to wind, change the drag, do whatever I need to do and still pick the net up instantly. And I can drop that as many times as I want if I have to and I've still got the landing net in my hand. So that's an absolutely key trick if you're going to rig your net up like this, is when you reach up for it, put your hand through the bungee cord, pull the net off. Now, if the fishing's fast and furious, another trick, I have a secondary magnet, which is here in the frame of the net, and that just goes up here under the front of the vest. So basically what that means is the net's to hand. So if I'm catching lots of small fish really quick, that net's very, very close by and I can get to it really quickly. You can take that a step further if you want to. And I talked about it a little bit in fly fishing and fly tying, where I rig the net so it sits like a pan in front of me. I'll be honest, I don't really do that all that often these days, only in a couple of situations. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. You can do it with a loop in your wading belt and you just push the handle in, or you can do it with a third magnet. But like I say, I've pretty much gone away from using that. I typically find it a little bit more of a hindrance than a help. So I'm going to show you a couple of things of the magnets uh, which make the system work really, really well. So I'll just come a little bit closer. First thing, most of us use magnets like this on our vest. I absolutely hate these things for landing nets. I think they're useless. And the reason being, they have a tendency when they're on your back for this to happen. You can see that, but that split ring has fouled the magnet. Now that's why your net often drops off when you're using these kind of things is because quite often you're actually not getting magnet to magnet, you're getting magnet to the split rings. They have a really bad habit of tangling. The other issue is, because they're hanging loose, there's no fixed point to get those magnets to attach to each other. So these are the kind of magnets that I like to use. Now these are actually bolted onto the frame of the net. You can get these from Fly Tires World, a company that a good friend of mine, Eduardo Donor owns. Um, and they're a really, really good magnet, very, very strong, but they're a solid connection. On the back of my vest, I have this uh, slightly modified attachment that I've made, um, which basically means I have a fixed point. So when these two things go together, you can see dead clear, dead simple, really strong, nothing to tangle. They always find each other. It's a really, really good way to do it. The other magnet, the one that it's in the frame, it's just tie wrapped, a simple magnet tie wrapped into the mesh. And that's the one I use to locate it up under my arm for when I'm speed fishing. That's how I set my uh, landing net up. You'll notice that I've changed packs. My old William Joseph pack's on its way out, so I've started to try a new one. I'll probably do a video about that at a later date and show you a couple of little developments I've come up with which makes certain things a little bit faster. Um, but I really would encourage you, mess around with your landing net setup, make it so that it works for you, but above all, make it simple, foolproof, fast and efficient. It'll 100% put you more fish on the card 
the end of a session and from a pleasure fishing point of view you knows it might get you the fish of a lifetime when you don't fumble with your net trying to net it hope it's of use to you thanks a lot guys speak to you again